aside from having to talk to, you know, riders who ask you the same questions over and over and over again, good day for you so far? Yeah. Yeah, everything's fine. Okay. Let's get it. Sometimes the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame artists don't love uh, talking to the journalists, not Lee. So it, it is an, a pleasure to be speaking with you again. And so much going on. There's new music coming out through Rhino. There yep. is the Decades Rock Live thing. Let's talk about that first. So okay. how long did you have to keep the secret that the Decades Rock Live shows were happening in Atlantic City? I don't know. Uh, if it was kept a secret, I, I, I guess it was, but for me, I've just been, uh, you know, putting the work in and editing the songs. Um, uh, historically, our band never lets people sit in. Very, very few times in the 50 years we've been together, 50 plus years we've been together, do we uh, have people sit in with us. So on this particular show, these two shows, we're going to have seven guest artists. So it's highly unusual for us to be doing this at all. And uh, I'm looking right. forward to it. I've been talking to the artists and uh, we're going to have some fun. That is a really good point. When I've seen Chicago live before, you'll see Earth, Wind & Fire come up for a couple of hits, that kind of a thing. You yeah. never see a, hey, here's Steve Vai coming up to play. Now, are the That's artists right. that are playing with you guys in Atlantic City, how did you come up with that list? Are, are they a mix of friends, mutual management, clients, that kind of thing? Barry Summers pretty much put the, uh, the, the guest list together. And uh, ran it by me, and you know what songs they were going to they were going to play, and whether whether they were going to be able to be free for rehearsals and all of the other stuff that goes into the show. So it you know it, it took a while to put it together, but uh, we have it together now. Right. When I've seen Chicago each time, the set list has been totally different. And that sometimes you go, we're giving them the hits. Sometimes you go. We're giving you the hits, but also the deep cuts. Sometimes it's Christmas. What exactly is the theme to this set list? Is it the hits? Pretty much so. The the, the first uh, segment of the show is going to concentrate on the first album. Mm -hmm. uh, second segment is going to concentrate on hits. This The third one is going to be like an unplugged segment. And then uh, I, I guess the fourth one is just sort of... Uh, Let's go on out and do some more hits and uh, and end up with a, a, a big climax. Something that I've said in reviews that I've done of Chicago live shows is most bands will play 100 minutes, 110 minutes. They have to throw in some covers because they go, oh, we don't have enough hits to fill the time. In the case of we Chicago, you see Chicago and you go, oh, they didn't do that hit, that hit, that hit, that hit. <laughs> That kind yeah. of a thing happens. Is there any fear in you? And I don't know if that's the right word of going, oh, do we leave out the right hits? No, no, because the songs that will be in there uh, will work. Uh, it's, that's my feeling anyway. And if um, I, I think people will be excited to see what it is we're going to be doing for the show. And I know that I know that I am. I put the edits together and, and all of the... Uh, the inner workings of, of the of the show. So uh, I'm excited for it. So if I can start with a compliment here, I don't know if you're maxed out on compliments for the day already. We'll see. But, I but what, you, <laughs> what you just mentioned about editing the show, when I saw Chicago the summer before this last one, before you hit the stage, we saw a documentary about that latest studio album you made and how it was in your studio that you had built in the midst right. of the pandemic. So right. in other words, you're the rare horn player that is a leader of a band or one of the leaders in the band. You kind of break that stereotype. I'm one of the leaders of the band. And, uh, you know, me, Jimmy and Robert uh, are the three remaining uh, original members of the band. So uh, we pretty much call the shots together and check with each other when something needs to be uh, decided one way or the other. And uh, well, be able to record in my studio was was great fun we the the hardest thing was the pandemic so you couldn't get the physical bodies in there for like you know 13 14 months until we were able to start traveling and jimmy came in and we did some brass parts and then uh uh lou and and uh robert came in for some vocals and uh you know the producer came in 
you know, so we, we did some stuff at the studio. It was, it was a lot of fun. And um, I look forward to doing more. When did you become an Arizona person? Because you're in a band called Chicago. The documentary I was watching about the rainbow mentions Chicago a lot about how in your early days, you playing that and the whiskey and all that. Right kind of prop up the band so it's not like they go oh leave from arizona it's kind of like the the fourth oh, place you'd be associated with exactly you wouldn't think of me being an arizonian however i moved here in 2010 and uh, i've been here ever since and now i have a studio here i i uh, actually bought a piece of property that uh, i converted into an orchard so i'm pretty much transplanted here now for the rest of my life Hopefully it will go on, you know, I'll be 150 years old and we'll be doing another interview together. Well, it says a how lot. Did you, how did you do it? <laughs> how did I interview you at the age of 150? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom's greatness and AI. Uh, have you sold the Chicago AI rights yet, by the way, or, or is that eventually going to be sold? I don't even know what you're talking about. The Chicago so AI of- rights, There are. there is such a thing. Yeah, something that we're seeing, if you go down the list, uh, Irving Azoff has been buying up a lot of bands' legacies. Uh Beach Boys is one of the first from that. I think Graham Nash or Crosby he did. Then we saw the the Roy Orbison hologram show. Whoa! I I think we saw a Tupac hologram come out of Coachella. So those are rights. Eventually we could see elite AI on stage. (laughs) <laughs> that sounds pretty scary is this the one with hair <laughs> join the club man uh hey the, the compliments the compliments here the christmas record that is or collection rather that's coming out through rhino tell me more about that what's on that it's the greatest hits that uh rhino has comprised by looking at how many how the the uh, level of sales those songs have done for them and that's how we uh, decided what the greatest hit package was going to be. And uh, I, th- I think that's coming out like November 9th or 10th, or it might be in the stores a little bit earlier, but uh, it's coming out very soon. So we're excited about that. And we're also going to be on the, the Macy's parade, uh, the Thanksgiving Day parade this this next month, the, at the end of this month. And uh, so a lot of things are coming up besides the decades live as, as well. Given the longevity and the high level of success for so many years of Chicago, I'd have to imagine that's your like seventh Thanksgiving Day parade. And I think it's our fourth, which is pretty much is unprecedented, I believe, in itself. Yeah. When I think about it now, my home venue here when I go to see the big concerts like Chicago is Jones Beach on Long Island. You've right. probably played there upwards of 40 times. You've probably played upwards of 40 times at Westbury Music Fair as well. Yeah, we played uh, we played there before when you had to take a boat to the stage <laughs> when, they, when there was, you know, the sharks moving around the uh, the stage in front of us. So and, and so all of the build up uh, in the, the the recent years. And uh, it's still a lot of fun going to New York and playing for a New York audience. It's really, really cool. With coming to a lot of these same venues a lot over the years, do you have any inside jokes or things that you like tried to hide in a venue? Like you signed the back of a door and you went next time and went, is it still here? <laughs> I've never done anything like that. I think Pank probably has though somewhere. I don't know if he's even told us. So so there might be secret things that, that I don't even know about. Yeah, I, I that concept or question comes from a friend of a friend of a friend who any yeah. vendor had hired as a ukulele tech or something like that, just to put somebody <laughs> on a payroll. He plays a ukulele? I th- it was either a ukulele or a mandolin, some instrument he didn't really need, but he kept somebody on a payroll to be a roadie. And okay. that guy knew, okay, in this club in Germany, there's this thing hidden in the ceiling. And he went back two or three years later and it was hidden in the ceiling. Okay, what, are, what was it, a bullet or something? You know what? I asked all the wrong questions. I should have asked what was in there. I don't know if it was illegal substances. I don't know what it was. Okay, yeah. Could have been a little uh, LSD up there waiting for future. So so back to you here. Yeah. 
<laughs> very few bands sell more than 50 million records. Very few bands get the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. Very few bands are still on a major label decades later, et cetera. Yeah. Is there anything that you haven't done yet with Chicago that you're still hoping will happen? I think we would like to do, uh, you know, movie scores, but so far that hasn't come up. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see what happens in the future. I mean, time is at hand. I'm ready. We are ready. Um, and uh, but we've had a great career, a fulfilled career, and uh, it hasn't stopped, and it's not seemingly going to slow down anytime soon. So I'm excited yeah. about what we're doing now and what's coming up in the future. Yeah, that documentary they showed on Access TV kind of emphasized all of that, where the pandemic was one of the only times, if ever, that Chicago was not on the road. I think the only band on the road as much as you guys is Cheap Trick. Uh, is there anyone that anyone else? I don't know, because I'm too busy working to, to worry about who else is working or not working. So, uh, you know, we, we keep ourselves busy. And as it said in the in the documentary, uh, we, we did the 50th uh, the, the 50th year documentary. And then we did a 55 year documentary because most bands, after they do the 50, they end up going away. So they're not even together by the 55th year. And uh, we had we showed that we are not only together, but we are moving forward beyond the 50 50. Right. So are there plans for another studio album or at least a single in the near future? Not at this point, but uh, anything could happen. But anyway. But at least you have are, decades rock live in Atlantic City to look forward to. Exactly. And ultimately, you think that might be a TV special and a home release and all that kind of stuff? I believe so. Uh, Barry would be able to answer those questions. Barry Summers, the producer, but uh, he's not here right now. So I'm pretty sure that's exactly what's in the pipeline for him. And I'll be taking it back to the studio to uh, to uh, mix it and sweeten it. Now, I, I know about this random recording session that you were a part of with Flavor Flav about 20 years ago for an album that never came out. Uh, a Flavor Flav album. That? Flavor Flav from Public Enemy covered. I remember uh, who it is, but we never did a recording with him that I'm aware of. He told me that he was with members of Chicago tracking. Does anybody know what time it is? And <laughs> the album did not come out because I think I, Def Jam or someone shelved it. He may have been doing it, but it was unbeknownst to me. And I don't know if anybody else knew about it either. The only time we met Flavor Flav was in uh, at, at uh, Jones Beach. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, he came backstage. We talked for a while, but that, that was about it. How you doing, Flynn? <laughs> well, the real question intended was a lot of people who are virtuoso players, I'm calling you the virtuoso, not yourself. Yeah. When they're not busy with the tours and the albums, they do a lot of session work. Are there a lot of albums that you kind of ghost played or played on uncredited? No, not really, because, uh, you know, Peter Chivarelli, our manager, has this pretty well booked out so by the time i come home i want to put my feet up for a while and then i usually get up during the day i practice i might go to my studio and and do something there we've had a lot of projects with uh, uh warner rhino that we have put together the carnegie hall album the carnegie hall project from from 71 so wow. there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline the bottom line is no shortage of excitement. My last question, right. which I don't know if it's going to get a three second response or a two minute response. Self-indulgent question here. Chicago's cross paths with everyone. Did Chicago ever cross paths on tour with Van Halen? No, we did not. Uh, and I'm not sure why. Probably both of us were too busy working. And uh, And as usual, when somebody comes into town and we are we are in the same town together on, on the same night. We're both working so we can't go to each other's show. So for some reason, we never met that. <laughs> oh, well, well, thank you for the many, many years of great music, great art. Glad to hear there's more tours coming. There's, there's more. more archival releases coming, more new material releases coming. It's really hard to keep up with you, Lee, but thank you for doing <laughs> that. And Decades Live, coming soon. Decades Rock Live. Decades, Decades Rock, Rock Live, excuse me. Outrocast.